the finger condom. I like the taste of them. I obviously finished <laughs> like most of my videos. Some people hated a certain part. So I had a few thoughts that would turn you on. I always forget this word. Gripping. Good morning, my sweet, sweet Evanescence. What are we doing today? We are editing day two of the uh, hand in lotion for 24 hours, but we had an issue last night, which was actually kind of a good thing, all right? Uh, the finger condom came off in the sleep, in the sleep, in my sleep. I don't know what time it came off. I just remember waking up and my condom had fallen off. Oh, the number of times that has happened. So I stuck a new one on this morning and I guess we're doing 24 hours on this one again. But it's helped me understand that I'm actually, I'm at a point now where I think I can make up stories in my head on the go. Like I can turn the thing that's happening in front of me into a interesting story. Like by that I mean, uh, it's like when you've been doing something long enough and you understand it well enough that you can do it on the fly. Like let's say, I don't know, a physics algorithm. Instead of having to go back to a computer to understand the algorithm and then try it out, you can just do it on the fly. That's where I feel like I'm getting to right now, which is quite nice. Uh, but I just saw a very, very nice side topic here. I just saw a video of a dude, and I've seen a couple of people do it before, where they they cover all the logos. So like this mic, would the brand would be covered. You would cover the camera name and when I first saw this I thought I thought that's I, I can't remember which way it came around I think I thought that's really pretentious as if you with the product you having bought the product has can make enough of an impact I don't know I don't know where my thought was there and then I thought actually that's kind of smart because these companies aren't paying for you to use their product like, you actually bought it. And then I just saw another video of a guy colouring on all of his logos because he it, he's expressing it's free advertisement. And I agree. Be good to get whatever you think of this as well. I agree it's free advertisement. And for the normal person, I think, yeah, do it. But for someone like, let's say me or a content creator, who could potentially partner with those brands. Your, the message you're putting across is, I won't talk about your product. I won't share how much I like your product unless you pay me to. Which on one hand you think is fair, like these companies should be paying people to talk about their products. And you know, let, let's say for the most part they are. But, I would say a person at a company or a brand is if they have two people that are very similar, one of them always hides their brand name and never talks about the product as enjoying it, and the other person just speaks about the product you know, as is, I'm not talking about promoting it, I'm just like mentions it every now and again. You're obviously going to go with the person that mentions the product. Number one, because they, I think that's you can see that it's almost like a feeling of being owed. The person who's then looking for those partnerships or to find a creator, if you see they've already been using the product, that's like, oh, we should definitely go with this person. Like they're already a supporter. And it makes for a much more uh, natural integration as opposed to now that you have a load of cash, you can talk about our product. So I would say, as the average person, sure, cover, cover them up, who cares? But if you're a creator and you're potentially looking to get sponsored by them or another brand, I think covering up labels is a terrible thing for that brand because it, you're basically then telling your audience, I'm not gonna tell you about a product whether I like it or not, unless I'm paid. That's the way I see it. I don't know if that's the way you see it.
What's the protocol for telling someone that they don't have their lights on when it's dark out? Like, should I flash them? Woo! I can't see it, where is it? <laughs> I'm hot. All right. Uh, I have some other top, well, I guess let's just shut this off now. I haven't, I switched things around this morning. I need to edit the pod vlog, so I'll do that. And then we'll get into the videos. But it's currently like 6.30 now, I think. All right, see you. See you in the house. I'm not really mad into energy drinks. I don't really like drinking them, but I found this one in my wardrobe that I, I made a video with it a long time ago and I, it's just been sat there. So I thought, let's give it a go. Oh. Oh, it's so nasty. Oh, I don't even know. Like it's fruit punch flavor. And I can tell there's fruit punch in there, but I don't know what other stuff is in there. Uh, all right, so planning day two of the 10 hours, sorry, so 10 hour point of being in with the hand in lotion. The first video is about 40,000 views. The analytics seem okay. There's a pretty steady drop off throughout the whole video, which means the, honestly, I'm, I guess I'm not really sure. What does that mean? If so, I guess I'll just show you. So the retention graph. So if you have time along here and uh, viewing, no percentage. So obviously you have 100, zero, and then the time, like let's say a video is 60 seconds. For a video to perform well, like most of my videos, you have a pretty steep drop off to begin with, and then it levels out and finishes up around 25%. Okay, and around the, let's call this three seconds, you expect 70% Plus. Now, this one is more like so, and then we're finishing off. I don't know. I can't remember the exact number. Like let's say twenty percent. Now, we're still looking good here, but throughout the whole duration of the video, we're losing people. People are getting disinterested. And that could very well be because of the way I did the video. Like it's much more slowed down. Ah, oh, still terrible. There's like a weird, there's a Red Bull flavor and then something really weird. And then the fruit punch. Um, yeah, so this is just more of a continuous, less of a curve than this line shows, but more of a continuous drop. And what that tells me is there's no specific point that people are dropping off the video. Instead, people are just generally losing interest throughout the video, which means that it's more a, my interpretation of that is that instead of it being about some people hated a certain part and it lost interest, the video style wasn't as interesting as it could be. And then you get into the battle of uh, what, um, yeah, the battle of do I make the video the way I want to make it because I want to make it that way and I don't care how other people want to see it or do I want to make it, um, I always forget this word. Uh, what's it called? A compromise. I always forget that word. Or do you want to compromise and make a video that you enjoy making and something that viewers will enjoy watching? That's where I want to be. Uh, I've definitely moved away from making content that pleases people and like whether I'm happy with it or not. Good. Blech. Nasty. 
essentially it tells me that I I'm going to obviously keep going with the same style of video that I'm doing, this kind of more laid back, but perhaps I be a little bit more upbeat in my personality. Like I can obviously do that. So if I rub off everything here, we still have this desire to quit, right? Like no desire to keep going. It's kind of silly. It's annoying. Oh, sorry, this isn't 10 hours, this is five hour. So five hour. Now there's nothing really that happened in this that's gonna, um, that's gonna be hugely tense or intense. So I think the setup want is to show Hmm. We obviously want to refer back to what happened in the first video. But I want that to be a larger aspect. I want to talk through the problems that we faced there and how did I try and overcome those in the second part, which is the five hours. So let me, I guess I'll just note down a few things that, like problems. It um, couldn't grip. Uh, that was mostly it, wasn't it, in that first hour? Because it was all about gripping. So I think we can get straight into the shower, maybe? Because that was a really funny part that wasn't expected. My expectation of putting the condom on my finger was that I obviously finished doing my workout, I'd go to the shower and use that to put over the top of my hand. So how about the point of no return is that? So point of no return is finish workout and shower, but Condom breaks and have to shower one handed. Okay. I guess we don't need the problems here, do we? All right, so we, we have our hook. The last setup one was I filled each of my wife's condoms with a skirt, squirt of lotion and slipped in a digit. Um, I'm going to, I guess, script this out after an hour of my fingers in lotion filled condoms. You know what's so weird is when I'm filming for the pod vlog and I have these moments where I'm trying to think, like I'm just stood here thinking about this. I start thinking about this and then my mind gets overrun with thinking, oh God, I'm wasting your time in the video. <laughs> and I need to get out of that. It's like a peppery, it's like, pe yeah, pepper. I do love the taste of Monster and Red Bull, but I, there are so many times I could get one, like especially with having a baby and a wife. <laughs> it's a good joke. Uh, yeah, I wanna get them. I like the taste of them, but I just, I just really try not to drink them. All right, so the setup want is we get it all on the fingers, and then I think I talk about, uh, I don't know, 
ripping at Jim. Um, I guess I know the general idea and I'll flesh this out when I come to writing out the script. Um, so I finished my workout because I found a way around my problem. The condom breaks and I have to shower one-handed. So then I think I go, I, I think I have to go into working at my desk and the things that came along with that. So working at desk, can't use track pad. And then can't use phone, can't use track pad, can't use phone. Bro, I almost just let a fat toot rip. How embarrassing, because real people don't toot. I'm a gentleman, I don't. Uh, okay, so working at desk, can't use trackpad and phone. So then I think I would talk about... Um, What? Oh. Groceries. Oh, what was interesting? Oh, family life, cooking, gloves. That was interesting. I forgot about that. Um, you know, I, since this fell off in the night and I don't know when, and so I'm having to redo the 24 hours on this one, uh, yeah, well, I guess since it fell off last night while I was sleeping, I think I'm going to have to put another glove on on top of this to make sure that doesn't happen again. There was loads of lotion still on it, so I have no idea if it fell off in the first hour or the f after like hour seven. Okay, so I get groceries. Um, I don't know, struggle to grab. I don't really know. <sighs> See, here's where I get caught up. Like, this is obviously my formula for TikTok videos. And the goal is to make the video fit into this formula or make this formula fit around the experience, the thing that happened. But in the five hour video, I don't think there was really any crisis point other than like glad to take it off. Maybe I'll do the two finger slide on trackpad. Oh, gloves, petting doodah. All right, so the two finger track slide on the trackpad is too difficult, so back to work. So then, what were my options? My options were just to keep going. For those of you that aren't aware, this section of the video is where the, the main character, so me, has to make a choice from the thing that's like making things go wrong they have to make a choice as to whether they uh, want to overcome the problem or just like accept that the problem is there and that it stops them. So what I'd like to do is have some choices that are very obvious choices, like keep going or just stop. And then a banana, which is a 
seemingly out of left field thing to be done. But when it happens, it's not so out of left field that you're left thinking, what the hell was that all about? It's something that was referenced previously. And I'm not sure what that is. So, keep going. Only nine hours left. Oh, no, wait. Nineteen hours left. What do I do as a banana? What did I do? Hang on, I'll be right back. <clears throat> uh, all right. So I had a few thoughts before I turned you back on. Ooh. <laughs> Mike would be good, wouldn't it? Do you want me to deliver that line again? So I had a few thoughts that would turn you on. I don't even remember what I said. That's good. But I did have the, I did have the idea that uh, for the banana, uh, I'm not going to lie to you, I pretended like someone, like Shay was calling me. She wasn't, I just needed a toilet. <laughs> so, uh, fucking dog's at the door. Come on, Dudars. You coming in? Come here. Dudar, come here. Good girl, come on, Dudars. You wanna come in and lie down in your seat? Good girl. So, I'm working and it's bloody difficult, it's annoying. And then I go to get the groceries to help Shay, which are hard to grab with, with this, because they just roll off. And then, uh, Jiminy Christmas. Duda, what's the problem, dude? There you go, you can have a look in there if you want. You want some of the deer antler? I bet you do. Uh, why do I have a deer antler? Great question. Uh, I'll use the deer antler to Upcoming side quest. So the deer antler is gonna, it's, it's a rigid but soft material. I don't know if that's the way you would put it. But I'm gonna crack off bits of dragon glass obsidian, <laughs> using the Game of Thrones name, and use it to shave with. Because this is meant to be the sharpest material in the world. It does blunt really quickly, but it's meant to be super sharp. So if I crack off bits of that and then try and shave with it for the, the straight razor series, the cutthroat razor series. All right, so we have the, I just watched one of the videos back of what it looks like trying to slide along a timeline like this. Terrible. Which gave me the idea that actually I can lead that into almost like a, an ad for this YouTube video, for these YouTube videos, knowing that behind every TikTok is a YouTube pod vlog. All right, so... Uh, instead of keeping going or giving up, uh, I choose just to make the YouTube video with like next to no edits and it ends up being an hour 45 long video. Okay? And then I don't think we need to, I don't think I need to say like in the finale as my strength because in the last video I put the strength at, oh God, where is it? The strength was like finding, finding a way. So keep going. Go on then. And I don't think I need to like deliver a message that you should always try and find a different way because I want that to be conveyed through the video as opposed to a direct statement. So. I can guarantee that this is something that 99% of people won't pick up on consciously. They may pick up on it subconsciously, but it would be this person who has all these, who starts this thing, has all these problems um, and kind of wants to give up because of these problems, but instead decides to keep pursuing it 
and then gets to a point where it really interrupts what he's doing in his life, what, what I'm doing in my life. And instead of giving up or just blindly keep going, I look at an alternative solution to the task that I'm working on at the moment. I don't think it needs a step. I go back and forth on that. I think you have the, when it comes to content or like, and you want to get a message across, there's some people that say you need to call that out for the viewer. The, the viewer needs to be told something. And then there are other people who argue that the viewer is not stupid and can pick up on these things. But, and while one or both of those might be right, I don't know where the line is for making it clear enough that someone can easily pick up on what you're trying to put down versus having it be its own statement. It's like, I guess a, my main goal of this video is that I enjoy making it. The secondary goal is that people enjoy seeing it. The tertiary goal, the third goal, is that someone gets something out of this video, which would be realizing that when they come up against an obstacle, yes, it might be easier to give up, but they should find a way to keep going. I don't know why I keep drinking this. Ah, oh, spilt it. Here's a, a, a word I've never seen before. Carnosin, canosin. This patented form of beta alanine has been clinically shown to fight fatigue and improve muscular endurance. Beta alanine is the stuff in pre-workout that gives you the um, itches, isn't it? I think so. All right. And then finale is just going to be uh, moving on to the 10 hours. But I think one, two, 10 hour. But I can't remember. I know I added more lotion to my two fingers at that time. But I, I don't know if I should bring it up in this video. I think I should. Like that's the prelude that the stakes are getting higher in the next video. I think that's good. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the hook because like when I showed you the retention graph earlier, it seems pretty positive. So now I think I just, I script this out, shoot it quickly. So it's 1.15, I kind of want to get the video edited and up between two and three o'clock. With my new style of video, I think I can do that. Without the sound effects, without any fancy editing, and without being, trying to be super dramatic, I think I can do that. So, I don't know, I don't know about you, but I have this, like, downtime to me, like relaxing, taking time to chill, relax, seems like a massive waste of time to me, but I need to get out of that workflow, that idea, and into this idea that like downtime is necessary and you shouldn't have to be forcing work all the time. Like this series, I started it yesterday, turned it into a four part series, and now I'm working flat out for four days, <laughs> which is good, like I love doing it, but I wonder if I shouldn't be putting this pressure on myself. I don't know, just got to find a way to enjoy it. Moving from, I saw this earlier, moving out of this place of I have to do this and into a place of I get to do this, which I, I do for the most of my life. But like if this is a four part series and the first video, yes, it's at like 40 something thousand views, but I would consider that in my world more of a flop in comparison to my normal videos. Um, and so I have this, I have less of a 
desire to make the second video because I don't know if it'll do well. Right, that is stupid. It's all in my head. Like, and that's me. I get. Here we go. We're going on a rant now, aren't we? The, the it's crazy to think the views do matter. Like how well a video does does directly impact me because it's a it's a direct tell that people either did or didn't enjoy the video. And I'm I think that's what it is. I'm second guessing whether I should make the second video and the follow-up videos because I don't know if people are actually going to enjoy it. And now I'm just procrastinating. So let's, uh, I, I'll get back to you when the video is done. Yeah, cool. I just posted the video. I got two topics. One is, I'm going to write it down here, the idea of being inspired. And the next is a few things that I threw into this edit that I thought might be kind of cool to share with you. Kind of show you some of the extra things that I do that I think increase, um, increase the interest. Oh, on TikTok, actually, I kind of feel like it is about maintaining the interest. Like, can you just keep that interest? Because you, pr you always have a three second chance to grab someone's attention. So then it becomes, can you keep that attention? All right, so first thing, I will share my screen. Can you hear me? Good. All right, so let me show you these few things. So first of all, the timeline that you see here, let me stretch it up, mute it. This section, all right, anything under this section is the video that I just produced. And then I use these, uh, what are they called? Mark, I don't know, breakers? Gaps, I think they're actually called. I use the gap to move between the previous edit. So like we have part one, part two, part three. On TikTok, this is part two, it's the one I just posted. And then this is part one, because I didn't feel like they really truly linked in with the first video. Uh, okay, so let's go through this. By the way, the, the green here, I use just a green cover to export at a really low quality. So I take the audio, it's a video file, but it's really just the audio that I take then into CapCut, add the auto captions, bring it back or like export it, bring it back, remove that layer and then add in the file with the, or the video file with all the captions. And because it's the green screen, I can just key it out. So then I, I still use the same kind of process the whole time, which is to have my main timeline layer, which is this one here, is going to be the majority of the voiceover. And then anything on top of that are going to be clips. Now, anything that I feel takes up, we'll call it prime real estate, stupid word for it, prime real estate. So anything that is going to be like sp spoken to the video, like spoken to the audience, I would slip down into the main layer. It's so like, let's say after this here, I had a comment to make that fit in. I would cut this clip at the end here and then move the comment section down into the main timeline. I really like this approach. Uh, I feel like it's super easy to navigate. Anyway, the first shot, those first three seconds are so important. So I have chosen a shot. I'm kind of, I'm not sure if it's the right move. I think it's a good move if people can notice, but in this shot, you've got, uh, let me play it for you. You've got both emotion from me and something happening, which looks kind of gross. You're like, what is he squeezing on his finger and why is there white stuff coming out? And then this, where's the next bit that I, the 
the next one is that I actually shot as extra. Well, first thing, I, it was so close to posting the video without a blur on Rookie's face. I'd have been so mad. I probably would have taken it down, added a blur and re-uploaded. Uh, I did shoot... Um, oh yeah, there was a section in here. Let me add the other mic. Did add... I, so first of all, this section was... There's another... You know what, let me just... Is there a reset button? No. Shoot. Shoot a biscuit. No. Delete keyframe. I think that's what I had. And then it was like this. So and to keep it dry. And it ripped. The one thing it's So it <laughs> you might think, oh, like I don't really see much of a difference. Uh, what are you talking about? Fair question. I think I took out it ripped because I thought that was obvious watching the video. And just wasn't needed. And I quite liked the little bit of silence before or right after the snap. The one thing it's designed not to do, and it done did happen. As a YouTuber, I enjoy spending most. Oh, the text here. As a YouTuber. As a YouTuber. I'm not a YouTuber, am I? But uh, I want to drive, I guess it's kind of a lie, is it? What do you really call a YouTuber? Do you have to be successful? <laughs> uh, but I wanted to use this as a little bit of promotion for the YouTube channel, why not? And what better way to do that than to tell people you're, you're doing it? All right, we'll see, if people check it out and they like it, great. If they check it out and don't like it, that's also fine. Uh, what else do we have? I did. I, after a little bit of debate yesterday, I decided I would go and shoot. I really did welcome the break to help my. A section of me wearing like stupid things to go and get the groceries in. It was just too op too good of an opportunity not to do. I really did. So we've got a football boot and my really did welcome wife's shoe. I don't know if you can see it well enough. <laughs> Um, it's annoying because at the time my wife had taken a load in already and I could actually carry what was left in both hands but obviously that's not particularly dramatic um, this video actually goes on to show that I carry the whole thing but again I had to I really wanted to play into that the meme of a uh, you have to bring everything, all the groceries in. Anything that's in the car, you have to bring inside in one trip. I just wanted to play into that. Any other? This shot is actually cropped in a fair bit. So this is it. Normally. And I just felt that it didn't, it wasn't very easily for the viewer to see what was really happening in the shot, which is me using weird fingers. So I thought I wanted to call that out and just crop into that a bit more. I also kind of highlight that a bit again, a bit here. And then we have another chance to throw in a little tag for the YouTube. We'll see if this video does well, it'll be very interesting to see if people actually go check out the channel. Okay, next thing. Uh, let me put this mic away, stop the screen recording. I've got a little monitor above the camera for the mics to see if they're both connected or not. That's what I was looking at. Um, yeah. Is it, how do you get inspired by, how do you get inspired to make content or for ideas? The way I see it is you, you experience the world around you and you take different sections. You can just steal someone's way of doing things, but that sucks. 
you might turn out to be better than them, but it's, in my opinion, that's pretty dishonest. Excuse me. But you can take small bits from all these different styles, everything you see, and then you can combine it into your way of doing things. Now, I know a lot of people say, figure out your style before you start making YouTube videos or whatever videos it is. Your style is what is gonna cause you to grow over time. Like you need to have your style, but it's gonna take a long time to get there. So when people say it's gonna take, you know, two to five years to get anywhere on social media, that's because you are trying to figure it out. Unless you know the system, know what you're gonna do and go in with a real plan that you know is gonna work, you're gonna be trying different things, which is fine. I think figure it out. What I was really getting at is when you're making a specific type of content or whatever job you're doing and you want to create your own style, do you watch other people that have a similar style to you or do you just choose not to watch that because you feel like it will, um, what's the word I'm looking for? that will be woven into your own strategy, your own style, unintentionally. It's like, if you'd never written before, how would you hold a pen to write? Right, like if you've seen someone else write before, you're obviously going to do it that way or some variation. But what happens if like I see a pen for the first time and I'm like, okay, well I'll, I'll hold it in my fist and I'll just do, draw like this. Essentially what I'm saying is, like while I'm asking you the question too, I'm very interested in what you may, how you may do that. I'm also thinking about the fact that I, I actively choose not to watch other content that's similar, somewhat similar to mine because I don't want my vision of my style to become clouded. Now I, 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 I do, like if you have the argument, well that's silly Oliver, why wouldn't you look at what your competition why wouldn't you look at what other businesses in the same field are doing as you and yes they could be do doing something right but i do, i just i spent so long doing this that i would become clouded by what they're doing and lose this sense of experiment experiment experimenting with how i want to do my things my way what I do pay very a lot of attention to is analytics, comments, and seeing where people like and dislike so that I can make a better piece of content for them, which in turn works out better for me. So it's, it's a win-win. <coughs> I'm so sorry. <coughs> okay, how's the video doing? Uh, it is so new at 580 at the moment, not ideal. Yesterday's video is at 48.9. Let me show you the retention graph I was talking about earlier. You see? You don't see, do you? Because it's too bright. Pretty hefty drop off to the end. Well, I guess not really just at the end, just across the whole video. Is that still too bright? Yeah, adjusted. All right, not ideal. Decent engagement though. So we are currently at 592 with decent engagement for the video we just posted 20 minutes ago. Cool. So I think we're gonna call it for a day. You know what I'm gonna do actually? I'm gonna come down later after Rugi's gone to bed and I'm just gonna make some clips. I think I'm not gonna do it on video because I've done, I've always been on video for the last like 65 days of doing this. That's pretty crazy. And I just wanna kind of like just release, see how it does. But 
the videos have been get the clips have been getting some pretty good views and likes like this one 852 views 84 likes that's very good 804 views 89 likes 713 views 79 likes and some videos before that too also weirdly we've oh we're at six followers on one of the accounts on TikTok, but on YouTube, listen to this. Uh, switch account. <laughs> this is really good, it's really good, but it's also tragic. So the YouTube Shorts accounts, one of them's at 65, the next at 72, and the next is at 23 subscribers. So two of my fan accounts have more subs than the main account, which is weird. <laughs> but I think that's the game. I think that was unintended. I didn't realize that was gonna be the case, but perhaps that is the way this goes. It's gonna be that people start to follow these fan accounts first, and then once those fan accounts have a decent number of followers, people are then gonna to start to figure out why and maybe search up me, my name. I think that's going to be the way. Um, yeah, because I think this is, we're at the very beginning of creating that brand awareness. Creating that brand awareness? That seems stupid. Generating brand awareness. And so I think that's going to take some time. Uh, yeah, right, let's, let's chill there for today. I'm going to make a note right now to tell you about, um, a call I had with, uh, he's not a talent manager, but he works in the like influencer marketing game. And he was, he was very impressed with our previous partnership and he had some really nice things to say. So I think that would be cool to share. I was really, that's probably the first time in a long time that I've heard someone compliment uh, the way I go about my business, which is really nice to hear. So make the pod vlog note. What am I doing it this way for? Pod vlog note. Tell story about influencer marketing liked doing business with you. Done. All right. Well, thank you for watching. See you tomorrow. And we'll do we'll do the ten hour video tomorrow, uh, which I think is going to be good. All right. <laughs> yes. I want to get two edited tomorrow, so that I'm not working Saturday. Yeah. So if we can do two tomorrow, that would be bueno. <laughs>